and it was very organic. I had absolutely zero uh, attachment to any outcome and I had no idea if it would work. So I had a glass Petri dish. I used the water that healed me. I've since used all kinds of waters and discovered a lot of things about that by doing that. But there was a bit of fluff floating around in the dish. So I was like, oh, my God. So I put my hand in to take out the fluff. And yeah. I thought, I wonder if my hand will have any impact on the water's quote unquote memory, because this term had been used a lot, water memory. Yeah. I want to get into that, because what's the point of having memory? The point is that we learn. And so um, so I thought, oh, that thought. Whoa, was whoa, 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 whoa. All right. I'm getting a big, big download right now, which is uh, – I was just in Brazil sitting next to a gigantic waterfall called Kuros and or Kodos, Kodos. It's a gigantic waterfall in Alto Pariso. And the amount of water coming down was just ridiculous. It was and it was a very rainy day as well. And immediately I got this hit that the water on earth is representative of emotion. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. Same thing. Like literally it just came to me like water is emotion. This is the emotion. And so as you were just saying this about, you know, the, the, what you're describing with the liver and then making the, the shape of that, that the water is the memory of emotional states. And I keep saying as well that space time memory is, is really the storage of all of our, emotional states based on our input stimuli in the matrix of our perception. So our perception through the lens that we see the world, you know, we don't see the world as it is, we see it as we are. And therefore the storage medium for that is in the ether, right? And another form of ether is in the liquid biological form of it is water. Is this making any sense to you? I mean, you're kind of saying so many things, which I feel like I've been saying maybe in a slightly different way for years. And it's super, so nice to hear it because when we are, have emotion, when we cry, when we cry through deep sadness or through joy, however it is, the expression of that is through the fluid that comes out of our eyes. And yeah. something really nice that I'll add whilst we're talking about that is that I once heard that in our deepest sorrow, our phases are designed in such a perfect way. And I'll add, not just in our sorrow, but in our joy, that our tears come around our face and come back towards our mouth because they've been reordered and restructured and as a medicine to help either heal our hearts or amplify them. And I think that that's something really beautiful. But within the emotional state, you know, we feel this welling of emotion within us. It's such a tangible feeling. And so how do we feel all of these things? And with the expression of tears, you know, I often think if eyes are the windows to the soul, then tears are an expression of spirit. And we start going into these thoughts, which I think is so important because when you think about tributaries, the way water just kind of comes down and then breaks open into all these ways and then goes back to the ocean, this is where you go with water and Wherever I go in the direction of can water answer this question, can, can I see a connection here with water? And there's always a connection. And whenever you find that, when it does, starts to get more simple rather than more confusing, then I think you've found a, a kind of universal truth. And within this work, I think that water is showing me and many, many others and revealing there is, this, there is transparent that is non-judgmental, that it carries divinity, that 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 even when Bruce Lee says water becomes the cup, it becomes the teapot. It's like water became the human, but within this like this body, our fears are various different things that humans experience. But when the water is released, it's released from the bondage of that, and so we think about water in so many ways, but I mean, it's, it's depicted and, and talked about and revered so much in our ancient history and biblically, religiously, different religions, different philosophies, ancient ways. What is mentioned 722 times in the Bible, more than faith, love, and worship. When it, it says that, um, 
the spirit of God, which someone actually suggests that hydrogen is the spirit of water. My friend Isabel said that um, because hydrogen means the creator of water. But it said the, the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. And, and so there is so much talk about it on very deep levels, but even on the simplest way, water is a mirror. Someone said, what if water is expressing its consciousness? Or I will add that my friend Moses Hackman, he always said that water is the glove on the hand of consciousness, which I think is really interesting too. But this other person said, what if water is expressing its consciousness through us and every living thing to observe itself from every different perceivable and imperceivable perspective, which I found really interesting. That's what the one does with us. Mm -hmm. The one divides itself into the many so that it can perceive itself through our unique eyes of perspective and for the joy of then becoming one again. It's just it's why we, I believe we exist. And it's so fascinating you're saying this because this is, it's interesting. Now I'm, I'm really thinking about this connection between ether, water, and plasma and how all three are differing states and there's probably a, a fourth as well that we, we don't really think of that would be crystal um, and a solid form of it and probably time crystal as well. But it's, I wrote this little thing to, I was once thinking about the difference between these, these, uh, these three things. And I'd love to share this with you because <clears throat> I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I, I feel so strongly about the water being, you know, this emotion of earth, just like crying on earth and, and somehow it's carrying all this memory. And then what you also said that really got me very excited and interested was talking about the two, um, you know, the, the, the masculine and the feminine relationship that the, that the oxygen you said is, is masculine and the hydrogen is feminine, which actually makes sense because You've got one electron versus eight electrons. And the odd number of electrons is always going to be feminine. And the even number will always be masculine.